Starting off this countdown, we have Beauty and the Beast. Here's a film that surprisingly is based off of a real life story. Or so, that's what people believe. The story is of a real man named Petrus Gonzalves from 1537. He suffered from hypertrichosis, a condition that causes excessive hair growth all over a person's body. Due to his condition, he was captured as a child and treated like an animal or a beast. In fact, people locked him away in an iron cage and fed him animal food. And we all know that the beast in Beauty and the Beast was locked away in his tower and treated like a monster as well. So now, try looking at that movie the same. Moving on to number nine, we have The Jungle Book. Disney's movie The Jungle Book was actually based off of the book by Rudyard Kipling. But in the book, Mowgli literally turns into a wild killer. So long story short, he ends up killing Shere Khan and then discovers that his parents have been captured in a nearby village. So what does he do? He destroys the village and kills a bunch of villagers. Like where was that in the Disney version? Definitely would have made it way more interesting. In the end, he does find a safe haven in a different village, but still, this dude literally slaughtered a village. In our eighth spot today, we have Dumbo's father. Turns out that Dumbo is another Disney movie that's based off of a real story and a real elephant. Of course, you probably have realized by now that the true versions of these stories are downright dark. So in Dumbo, Dumbo's mom is Miss Jumbo, making Dumbo's dad Mr. Jumbo. Well, this is a reference to a real life famous elephant named Jumbo, a male African bush elephant who was treated terrible. He was tortured his whole life and then killed at a young age. You know how we don't see Dumbo's father in the film? Well, that's cause his father is dead. Like, Seriously, Disney, why'd you have to do that to us? Coming in at number seven, we have Snow White. In 1985, a German historian by the name of Eckhard Sander claimed he had proof that Snow White was based off of a real woman from the 16th century. Her name was Margaret von Waldeck, and she was a German countess. But when she was only 21, she was poisoned and passed away. Not only that, she was under the care of her stepmother who treated her poorly. At 16, she fell in love with a prince, but her stepmother greatly disproved. It's believed that her stepmother was the one who poisoned and killed her. The whole story of the seven dwarves was also real as well. Sander believes the dwarves were individuals with stunted growth as a result of working in the mines owned by her father. So there you have it. This Disney princess is based off of a real woman and her tragic life story. Moving on to number six, we have Cinderella. Cinderella is believed to have been based off of a story from the 17th century, but it may also have been based off of a Chinese fairy tale from 206 BC. This is the story of Yi Shen. Yi Shen was the daughter of a chief. Just like in the fairy tale, Yi's father tragically passed away and she was left in the care of her evil stepmother. She even had an evil stepsister that was very rude to her. Yi was then forced to constantly wait on her mother and stepsister. Of course, in the story, there was also a ball that Yi was not allowed to attend, but she makes a wish for a beautiful silk dress and golden slippers, and her wish comes true. She then attends the ball in this beautiful outfit, but is cautious. She doesn't want to be caught by her stepmother. In the end, she ends up fleeing the ball to avoid being spotted and loses one of her golden slippers, just like Cinderella and her glass slippers. The king becomes obsessed with trying to find out who the shoe's owner is. You get it, yeah, 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 yeah. The slipper fits and they live happily ever after. But there's also another version of the story that's much darker. And this is from the book written by the Brothers Grimm. So in the original book, when the prince arrives at Cinderella's house with the glass slipper, the sister's feet don't fit, right? So what do they do? Well, one of the sisters cuts off her toe and the other one cuts off her heel to try and make the slipper fit. Obviously that didn't work out for them. Then in the end, they get their eyes pecked out by a bunch of birds. So it's definitely not Disney friendly. Try to keep your mind off of that next time you watch Cinderella. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with The Shining. The movie Coco makes a number of disturbing references to the movie The Shining, which seems weird because one is a child's movie and the other is clearly not. So in one scene in the movie, we see Dante the dog wake up from a nap. In the background, we see an ax stuck into a tree. We didn't think much of it, but the director said that that ax was modeled after one of the axes from The Shining. You know, here's Johnny. <laughs> That's not the only reference though. In the same shot, right behind the axe, there is a red drum. The director said this was a reference to red rum. 
from The Shining, which then we know is murder backwards. So it's just creepy, okay? In our fourth spot today, we have The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I swear, this movie is based off of one of the darkest stories. So it was based off of the story by Victor Hugo. In this story, things get messy and Quasimodo fails to save Esmeralda, who is being hunted by authorities. In fact, he kinda hands them over to them by accident. And then it gets dark and he watches her get hung. In the end, he is so distraught that he goes to her grave and stays there until he starves himself to death. That's not all though. Years later, someone goes to open her grave and they find Quasimodo's bones laying next to hers. When they try to separate the bones, they turn into dust. The end. Kind of glad that the Disney movie didn't end like that. But it would kind of make for a good scary movie. Coming in at number three, we have Wally. This one is, uh, it's an interesting one, to say the least. But there's a theory going around that the humans and Wally ended up eating each other while on the spaceship. Yeah, you heard me. Let me explain. So in one of the scenes, it reveals to the audience that the humans were on that spaceship for longer than they had anticipated. They were only supposed to be there for about five years, but it ended up being there for around 700 years. Okay, so how would they manage to have a food supply on board for that long? There's no way they could have. Here's another question. When someone dies on board, where's the body going? Well, theory goes that they take the body, grind it up, and make food out of it. Those drinks we see people slurping? Yeah, it's liquid human. What makes it worse is that everyone on board the ship seems to be plump and well fed, meaning they enjoy eating each other. That is, if they even are aware that that's what they're doing. Moving on to number two, we have Scar's corpse. Disney is sick for adding this into their film. So Scar's dead body can be seen in the movie Hercules. In the film, there's a scene where Hercules is wearing a lion on his body while he is getting painted. He then takes it off and throws it on the floor, and you can clearly tell that it's Scar. So after the Lion King, Scar was skinned and then given to Hercules. How dark. And this was actually confirmed by Disney's lead animator. Andreas Dejo worked on animating both Hercules in Hercules and Scar in The Lion King, so they threw this in as a little Easter egg. But it's not a cute or funny Easter egg, no, it's pretty dark and messed up. And in our number one spot today, we have Pocahontas. The true story of Pocahontas is an extremely dark and messed up one. It is nothing like the movie Disney made it out to be. So the movie was inspired by a true story of a young girl named Matoaka. Pocahontas was just a nickname given to her and it actually means little brat or the naughty one. So there's that. But anyways, in the film, Pocahontas is a young adult. In real life, she was only 10 years old. But don't worry though, she didn't actually have a relationship with John Smith. Thankfully. In fact, in real life, John Smith was said to be a very unattractive and rude individual. Anyways, continuing on, Matalaka actually did save his life by telling her tribe to spare him right before he was about to get executed. That's pretty much as far as their relationship went. But Matalaka did not have the best life. In 1612, she was kidnapped, taken advantage of, and then forced to become Christian. They even changed her name to Rebecca. She then was forced to marry a man named John Rolfe, and she had to move to England with him. Sadly, she passed away a year later at only 20 years old. Some say she became ill with smallpox or tuberculosis and died, whereas other people believe that she was murdered for looking different. She passed away without ever seeing her family again. Isn't that a messed up story to base a child's movie off of? I think so. Starting off this countdown, we have Scar's corpse. The Lion King's character Scar can be seen in Hercules, but he's not alive. No, they show his dead body, which is pretty dark, Disney. Sheesh. So in Hercules, there's a scene where Hercules is wearing a lion on his body while he's getting painted. He then takes it off and throws it on the floor, and we can clearly tell that it's the body of Scar. So after the Lion King, Scar was skinned and then given to Hercules. How dark. And this was actually confirmed by Disney's lead animator. Andreas Deja worked on animating both Hercules and Hercules and Scar in the Lion King. So they threw this in as a little Easter egg. 
In our ninth spot, we have The Shining. And if you guys are liking this video so far, why don't you hit that thumbs up button? Because it really helps us out and I appreciate it. Stephen King's The Shining was referenced an awful lot all throughout Toy Story, which is super whack because we all know that The Shining is not a kid's movie and is certainly not Disney friendly. First, let's take a look at the first Toy Story. Fans were quick to point out that the carpet in Sid's house looks exactly like the carpet in the hotel in The Shining. I mean, they are different shades, but it's the exact same design, which is also quite clever because then they're trying to use this to symbolize how terrified the toys feel inside of Sid's house by comparing it to how the characters felt living in the hotel in The Shining. Like 10 out of 10, that was super well done. But that's not all. There was another reference to The Shining, but this time in Toy Story 3. They used the number 237 a lot throughout this film. 237 is referenced to room 237 in The Shining. This number can be seen on the license plate of a garbage truck, on a message Woody sent to a toy whose code name is Velocistar237, and on the side of a security camera in Sunnyside Daycare. In fact, one of the editors on the film admitted that these were all references to The Shining. I mean, it's kind of a weird movie to reference in a kid's film, but whatever. Moving on at number eight, we have Melted Olaf. Sadly, a lot of Disney characters don't have the happy ever after we thought they did. Next, let's take a look at Olaf from Frozen. He's such a fun and loving character, but sadly, he doesn't have the best ending. Sometime after Frozen, Olaf dies, he melts away, and his body can be seen in Moana. If you take a close look at the supplies Moana is carrying with her on her boat, you can see an oddly shaped carrot and a stick that looks like a hand. Looks exactly like Olaf's nose and hands. So Moana was using his nose as food and his arms as a possible fire starter for her mission. Well, that's dark. In our seventh spot, we have Finding Nemo, again. For this next Easter egg, let's take a look at the tearjerker of a movie, Brother Bear. For real, if this movie didn't make you cry, then you're a monster or your heart is made out of ice. Anyways, in one scene when the character is salmon fishing, we can see Nemo among the group of salmon that's about to be caught and eaten. First off, how the hell did Nemo, a tropical fish, get so far north? Like Marlin must be tired of looking for your ass. Anyways, what does this mean? Well, it means that Nemo, the little rascal, went out again and got lost somehow. And then he ended up as someone's meal. I doubt he made it out alive this time. Now, it turns out that at this time, Disney and Pixar were feuding. So that might be why this creepy little cameo was put into the film. In our sixth spot, we have Skinned Sully. Now, I love the movie Monsters, Inc. So this one is pretty dark for all you fans out there. But Sully is dead. Yep, you heard me. He died sometime after Monsters, Inc. was released. So in the film, Randall always mentions how bad humans are. At one point, he says that humans skin monsters and make toilet seat covers out of their fur. Sadly, this foreshadowed the fate of Sully. In a Toy Story short called Toy Story Toons, Party Source Rex, there's a scene where we see a kid taking a bubble bath. And it just so happens that in the bathroom on the toilet seat is a fuzzy Sully seat cover. So Randall was right. Humans do skin the monsters and turn them into toilet seat covers. Poor Sully, he ended up being skinned alive. I wonder what happened to Mike then? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Boo Went Crazy. This next Disney Easter egg is accompanied with a pretty dark and crazy theory, so buckle your seatbelts. In the movie Brave in the Witch's Workshop, we can see a wood carving of Sully. Why would that be there? First off, Brave takes place hundreds of years before Monsters, Inc. does. The witch and Sully didn't exist at the same time, but she drew him, meaning at some point in her life, she must have met him. Well, theory goes that this witch in Brave is Boo from Monsters, Inc. I know it seems wild right now, but just hear me out. So Monsters, Inc. takes place in the future when humans don't exist anymore. 
It's theorized that the monsters use the doors to go back in time to a child's house to then collect their energy. Meanwhile, in Brave, we see that the witch magically disappears when she goes through doorways. Hmm, just like the scarers from Monsters, Inc. do. So theory goes that Boo couldn't forget about Sully. She missed him so much that when she grew up, she figured out how to teleport through doors. She then teleports through these doors in an attempt to stumble across Sully again. It's just sad because she did not age well. And who's gonna tell her that Sully is a toilet seat cover? Not me. Coming in at number four, we have The Shining Part Two. Toy Story isn't the only Disney movie to reference The Shining. The movie Coco does it too. And this is because the guy that added the Shining Easter eggs in Toy Story also worked on Coco. So in one scene, we see Dante, the dog, waking up from a nap. In the background, we see an ax stuck in a tree. We all didn't think much about it. We probably just missed it too. But the director said that the ax was modeled after one of the axes from The Shining. That's not the only reference though. In that same shot, right behind the axe, there is a red drum. The director said that this was a reference to Red Rum from The Shining, which we learned is murder backwards. You thought that was it? Think again. The Grady twins from The Shining also make an appearance. Yeah, you know, those creepy little twin girls in blue dresses? They're in Coco. As Coco runs through Frida Kahlo's Underworld Art Studio, we see a painting of the two twin girls. The director again confirmed this reference. It's so creepy. Yeah, let's put The Shining in a kid's movie, great. In our third spot, we have The Last Rex. Rex from Toy Story can be seen in the 2008 film Wally. -E. In one scene, we see him in the back, among Wally's -E collection of human junk. Now, if you think about this, this Easter egg is actually very depressing. Rex is all alone in a world that has been completely destroyed. All of his friends are dead. He's alone, isolated, and unloved. And as we know from all the Toy Story movies, loneliness really gets to these sentient toys. Rex is probably so anxious and depressed now. Moving on to number two, we have Herbie Fully Drowned. Speaking of sentient things, our favorite car Herbie from Herbie Fully Loaded has died. This car has made a cameo in a number of Disney movies, but sadly, his time has come to an end. In Finding Dory, there's a scene where we see Herbie at the bottom of the ocean. He's badly decayed and covered in moss, meaning he's been down there for quite some time. Now, I don't know if Lindsay Lohan pushed the car into the ocean or what, but we all know that cars and oceans, or large bodies of water, don't mix. So sadly, his time has come to an end. And in our number one spot, we have the three little pigs. Disney is sick for this next Easter egg. So for this one, let's jump back in time and take a look at Disney's animated short, The Three Little Pigs. In one scene, we see the pigs singing and dancing in one of their homes. But beside them, in the back, is a framed picture of sausages. As we all know, sausages are made out of pig. To make matters worse, the frame is labeled as father. So their father got turned into sausages and then eaten. In another scene, we see another framed piece of meat. This time, it's like a ham leg or something and it's also labeled as father. So the three little pigs' father was killed, hacked up, and sold as different meat items. Like, that is so twisted and sick. In at the number 10 spot, we have good teenagers, take off your clothes. And that was a phrase said in the popular movie, Aladdin. What? So in the scene, Aladdin and the magic carpet fly up to Jasmine's balcony, only to find Jasmine's tiger, Raja, was up there. You can hear a little subtle voice in the background that supposedly says, good teenagers, take off your clothes. In order to hear this, you actually have to turn up your TV really loud. Disney released a statement saying, in the movie Aladdin, it doesn't actually say that. Who what? What are you guys hearing? It actually says, come on good kitty, take off and go. The rumor started in 1993 when Aladdin was released to VHS. And at the number nine spot, the word sex is spelled out in the Lion King movie. A four year old boy from New York actually spotted this image while he was watching the movie. So just around halfway through the movie, there was a cloud of dust that forms when Simba, Pumbaa, and Timon were gazing into the stars while on a cliff. If you actually watch carefully, the newly formed dust appears to spell out S-E-X. Of course, Disney had a rebuttal. And they said that the image actually spells S-F. 
X, and there's not that line on that E. It was inserted by the special effects group, so it's supposed to spell like special effects abbreviated. Things are looking up into the number eight spot. Well, I'm talking about the minister's erection in The Little Mermaid. So during Ursula's wedding scene, you can notice something protruding from the minister's pelvic region. And it looks like someone is more excited about this wedding than Ursula. Although it does look like an erection, if you look at this scene from a different angle, it's the minister's knee and it's just badly positioned. Okay, so in at number seven, it's it's gonna have you question your eyesight. Cause I'm talking about the movie poster of The Lion King. So back in 2002, The Lion King was re-released in theaters for limited time. And this is a popular movie poster from it. At first glance, the poster seems innocent, right? It has Simba on the cover. But if you look closely, it looks like a semi-naked girl wearing what appears to be a thong. This is either Disney being very clever, or we just have too many people in the world with dirty minds. But now I probably just ruined your guys' childhood because you're always gonna see that image and I'm sorry. Okay, so the Little Mermaid makes a second appearance on this list and they come into number six. I mean, this is... We're talking about the damn Little Mermaid here, and they're making this list twice. And that's because a penis appears to be on the front cover of the VHS movie! So on the cover of the VHS, it seems that one of the castle's tips resembles a penis. And because of this, the castle's often referred to as the Phallic Palace. And Phallic is like another term for penis. It was reported that an angry artist tried to like sneak this image in there. And this is to get revenge because he was gonna get laid off. However, on the newly released version of the Little Mermaid, you don't see this image appear on the cover. Okay, so in at the number five spot, we have the naked person that appeared in The Rescuers. During this scene when Bernard and Bianca are riding around the city in a sardine tin, if you pay attention, you'll notice a naked woman through a window in the background. Disney actually made this subliminal message public, and they claim that she was put into the film during the post-production. On January 8th of 1999, Disney decided to recall 3.4 million copies of the 1977 animated movie. Well, if you thought things couldn't get any more shocking, well, uh, I'm sorry to say it does, and this next one comes in to number... We have more penis imagery, and this time in the Hercules. So after Hercules punches out the River Guardian monster, a horseshoe hits him right on the forehead, which causes him an awkward looking bump to grow out of his head, and eventually grew into a penis shape, including morphing his eyebrows into a set of testicles. Okay, this next image happens in Alice in Wonderland, and this comes into number three. So I think we can all clearly see what this rabbit hole looks like. And I'm not sure why Disney feels the need to insert all these sex actual innuendos in children's movies. Not only is this image seen in the film, a lot of people say that Alice in Wonderland has a lot of drug references such as cocaine, speed, LSD, nitrous oxide, crystal meth, MDMA, marijuana, mushrooms, opium, and nicotine. I'm not really sure what's happening in this movie, but I think Alice needs some help because that woman takes a whole lot of drugs. Okay, so Mickey Mouse makes an entrance into number two, and that's because he's caught holding a penis. This image is an internet favorite. Minnie's dress makes a subliminal penis shape in Mickey's hand, which confirms a lot of people's beliefs that Disney sexualizes their content and displays it for a vulnerable audience. Okay, so we've all made it to the the moment you guys have all been waiting for we're in at number one but quickly let's recap everything we've had we've had the little mermaid and all the penises we've heard aladdin tell teenagers to take off their clothes we've seen the sex words and clouds a naked woman in the rescuers alice might be using a whole lot of drugs but in at number one things get a whole lot worse and we're talking about the movie the monsters inc that did really good in the movie theaters and was seen by a lot of people so what are we talking about well this graphic image which was allegedly seen in the final scenes of the Monsters, Inc. It depicts what appears to be a children's drawing of two people in a compromising position. This image has been circulated all over the internet and it's left people wondering if this image is real or if it's just a hoax. So I looked into it a little bit more and it actually turned out that this isn't the image used in the movie. Someone photoshopped this really well and was able to like spread this rumor. And that's the reason why it comes into this list in at number one, because it even fooled me. However, it was confirmed that animators working on the film created this image as a joke. So this was created by someone who worked on the movie. Disney just knows how to pick. Them.